Is cruising really that different than other types of vacations? Absolutely. In fact, in this video, I'm going to share with you seven things that happen only on cruise ships that you will not see anywhere else. Hi there, I'm Ilana from the website lifewellcruise.com. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Now, are cruises really different from theme parks and land vacations and resorts? Absolutely. And in this video, we're going to go over seven things that are really quite different that happen only on cruise ships. Now I have to say there are probably more than seven, so please let me know the other things that are very different about cruise ships down in the comments below. And before I get started, I did want to mention that if you like this video, if you find it helpful, informative, or enjoyable in any way, then please do give the video a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, let's get started. So the first thing that happens only on cruise ships and is very unique, I think, is that all cruise ships have godmothers and in some cases godfathers, but I'll tell you more about that in just a second. But yes, all cruise ships are actually christened and there's a blessing that's bestowed upon them. And this is really a tradition that goes back many, many years. And there are some pretty famous godmothers for many cruise ships. So some of the famous godmothers have been celebrities, others have been royalty, others have been uh, Nobel Prize laureates, and even cartoon characters. Now, just in the interest of a little bit of trivia, I'm going to name just a few of the famous godmothers. So Sophia Loren is the godmother for all of the MSC ships. Yes, the entire MSC fleet. Now, there's hardly anyone more famous than Oprah Winfrey, and she is the godmother for Holland America's new Statendam. Princess Cruises has a royal godmother. The Duchess of Cambridge, Kate Middleton, is the godmother of the royal princess. And maybe my favorite godparents of all, the entire Love Boat cast is, well, they are the godparents of the regal princess. The Celebrity Edges godmother is Malala Yousafzai. She is a Nobel Prize laureate. Pitbull is the godfather to the Norwegian escape. And I told you there was a cartoon character. There's actually more than one, but Tinkerbell is the godmother to the Disney wonder. Now there are so many other godmothers and godparents to cruise ships. Let me know please if you have a favorite in the comments below. Number two, cruise ships are actually built even today with superstition in mind. Now what I mean by this is something you'll notice is that most cruise ships do not have a deck 13. So yes, you will be in the elevator and you will notice that it will be like deck 11, deck 12, deck 14. There is no 13. Even when you're choosing a cabin, take a look at that. You'll notice that there is no deck 13, except for, well, MSC ships. They do have a deck 13, but guess what they don't have? A deck 17. Yes, apparently the superstition in Italy is that 17 is an unlucky number. So MSC ships are built without a deck 17. Now I've heard that there are actually some other superstitions when they are building cruise ships. So let me know please if you do know any others in the comments below. Number three, cruise ships really do run like a small city and they have a ton of services on board. It really is pretty amazing. So something that you'll find in a cruise ship is they have actually their own water filtration plant. Yes, they have to make all of their drinkable, all of their potable water right on board. Something else they have is a medical center with a doctor on board, a nurse on board. Now, funny enough, they don't have a dentist. I'm really not sure why they don't have one, but in any case, they don't have a dentist. But what they do have on board also is if anybody gets really too unruly, if there's a problem, there is a jail or a brig and there is a morgue. I know it's unfortunate, but sometimes people do pass away on a cruise ship and they need to deal with that. So they do have a small morgue on board as well. Number four, and I'm personally really fascinated with this one, but it is that there's an entire language of cruisers and of crew, of course, but really even amongst passengers, there's an entire cruise lingo. This is something so different and so unique to cruising. So everything from when you're on a ship, and of course you don't have floors on a ship, you have decks. You don't have rooms like hotel rooms, you have cabins or state rooms. When you're looking at your cabin location, you're wondering, is it port or starboard? Is it aft or forward? Typically, when we speak of the person who's going to be cleaning your cabin, we call them a cabin steward and not housekeeping. Now, beyond this, there are acronyms that cruisers use all the time. MDR, main dining room, 
OBC onboard credit. So there's just so much cruise lingo that especially if you're new to cruising, this could be very confusing. I will leave in case you're interested, a blog post right in the description of this video. It's all about cruise lingo, like 85 terms that you'll wanna know, especially if you're new to cruising, very, very handy. Now I should also mention that I do also have this cruise lingo glossary. It is actually part of my 47 page ultimate cruise planner. Of course, that includes cruise packing lists, um, embarkation day checklists, shore excursion planning forms, and more. But it does also include two pages of that cruise lingo. If you are interested, I will leave the information for that as well in the description below this video. Number five, crew members also have their secret code that they use to communicate with each other and on the ship. Now some of them, and of course we hope we do not hear them on a cruise ship unless they're for a drill, and that does happen very often, they're always doing these drills, but it is Bravo, that means there is a fire. Oscar means man overboard. Kilo means that all crew members have to report to their emergency posts in case of an evacuation. And 3030 means that the crew needs some help from maintenance for a cleanup. Now a little disclaimer here, I have never been crew and I have read this online. So if you are crew or if you have been crew and you know some others, or if I'm wrong in any of this, please do leave that in the comments below. Number six, completely different from a regular hotel room, cruise ship cabins have metal walls on the most part. So of course that's why you often see on cruise packing lists and cruise essentials videos that usually we do mention to bring either magnet clips or magnet hooks. Oftentimes I do mention these, I think these are just amazing, but that's because the cabin walls are metal. Definitely something unique to a cruise ship. Number seven, don't expect to use the internet and especially don't expect to use your cell phone at sea the way you would use it at home. So while nowadays you can get internet packages that are much less expensive than they used to be in the past, this is something good. And oftentimes cruise ships now or cruise lines, some of them offer perks or even offer an inclusion of Wi-Fi, which is something good, but still you do not want to use your phone while you are at sea. Make sure you do turn that to airplane mode because when you are in international waters, your phone plan will not work. And trust me, this has happened to other cruise passengers in the past that didn't turn their phone on airplane mode and maybe made some phone calls while they were on the cruise ship. You will end up with a bill of hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Now I'm going to leave the information all about the ultimate cruise planner linked in the description below. It is a printable cruise planner that you can download and that you can print at home as many times and as many pages as you need. And like I mentioned, it does include as a bonus that cruise lingo in information so you'll find that there too. It is $10 off right now if you did want to check it out. Now I'd love to hear from you. Are there any of these that did surprise you? Are there any other things that are just so different that happen on a cruise ship that just don't happen anywhere else? Please leave that as well in the comments below. Now I'm going to leave a video right after this one all about how to organize your cruise cabin, all sorts of tips and hacks that you're definitely going to want to know before your next cruise. Now I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. And of course, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Bye for now and happy cruising.